Well, hello, hello, guys. How is everyone? Um, I'm so excited. We actually are here with Lindsay. Lindsay, um, yeah, see if you can unmute yourself. Sorry, I yeah. unmuted. There you go. Perfect. So hopefully you're jumping on, letting us know where you're joining us from. And um, I'm excited. I always love seeing new ideas for the snap frames because it's. I just think it's so fun to see what each person creates. And so that's what Lindsay's going to be covering. It's just a couple of holidays. Anyways, Lindsay, share with us what you're going to be doing. So tonight we're going to be making a snap frame. Um, it's really super simple, but basically we'll decorate behind with some ribbon and different embellishments. And then the front will have a cutout that you'll see to what's behind it. It'll be great That'll and be fast. Great. Well, um, I'm already excited. There's the, uh, the little um, fuzzy balls that you have next to you. I call right? them balls. They're so festive so and fun. Okay, well, I'll let you take it over. I'm excited to see what it turns out to be. Awesome. Okay. So for those of you guys that have never used snap frames before, the snap frame has multiple layers. So you'll see like inside of your snap frame, there's this ridge and then a second ridge. And when you buy it, it comes with this black foam. So if you have never seen them before, this type of a piece is for sale in the shop. And you're gonna slide this in first, then this foam piece layers next. And you just kind of put that in there just to kind of give you more. And then the last backing piece snaps in with the magnetic corners. So you can see here how that kind of gives you a shadow box effect. And I thought that was really cool. So what I wanted to do was to create our own cutout and then um, use the back almost to kind of like have it peek through. So I'll go ahead and get started, you guys. I uh, don't have, I'm staying at a hotel and the Wi-Fi isn't working so I can't see your comments. So sorry, but I will come back on afterwards and check them all out and answer any questions. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of go through it and then I will check back for any questions, but I'll try to show you guys how to do it. It's gonna be really fun. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is for this first layer. So I've created some other ones before and I actually just use the cardboard from my Kiwi Lane Club kits um, to, cause it's a little bit more sturdy to make this top layer or um, what I'm gonna to do tonight is I'm actually just gonna use this behind my paper so it'll hold it a little more stiff. So we're gonna cut out our tree. So if you are one of the lucky few who owns Winter, which is um, one of the back in the day, um, that just like messed me up. I put it on do not disturb, but I just saw someone calling. So hopefully that didn't pause the video. Um, if you're one of the lucky few who have winter, I think the tree in winter would be perfect for this. I actually don't have winter. I um, gave it to one of my customers a while back, but I was also thinking um, you need like a bigger template. So you could do the large ornament, you could do a bigger snowflake, but tonight I'm actually just going to just kind of freehand a tree. So that's also an option. We are still gonna be using our templates in a couple other ways. Um, but first I'm just going to choose my background paper. So I don't know if this really makes sense to you guys yet, but basically there will be a background paper with some embellishments and then behind it, I'm going to have some different ribbons. They'll kind of be like the shadow box. So I want something on the front that's a little bit more simple. So here's the papers I've chosen to go with my ribbons. So I'm kind of thinking me so weird. I always ask you guys for help all the time, but I'm going to have to pick my own stuff. It's so hard for me. Um, let's see. I was thinking of doing something that's like kind of a little bit more simple. So I'm leaning towards either this one here or the polka dot. Even though this is busier, I feel like it still will make a good outline. So I think I'm gonna go with this one and I'm gonna do it with the um, shape vertical. So then what I wanna do is I wanna cut out a tree shape. So I'm gonna go old school, like how you learned to make things 
back in elementary school. And I'm just gonna just take a piece of cardstock and fold it in half and then make the little tree shape. It's gonna be really super low key. All right, let's see if I have any scrap paper. I won't miss too much. Maybe I can use this one over here. So hard. I hate cutting paper. It's like my hardest thing to do. All right, I'll use this because I have a couple of pieces of it. So I won't miss it too much. So I'm literally just gonna fold it in half. Just like this. And then I'm going to just freehand cut it, cut a tree, kind of like I'm just cutting half of it. So I know that I want it to fit within this space. So I'm gonna make a little mark where I want the top and the bottom of the tree to be. I'll just do this at the top and then do a little mark with my pencil. So I know kind of like the limits of my tree shape. And then I'm gonna just cut. And I don't want it to go too wide either. So I'm going to also make a mark as a guide for that. Now, again, if you have winter, I think the tree from winter would be perfect for this. So I'm just gonna make a mark here because I know I don't want my tree to come out any further than that. Okay, so as you may know, you just kind of, I'll start at the bottom. I'm just gonna do a little stump like this. And then this is the furthest out I can go is this black mark. So I'll just kind of cut to there. And then I'm just going to cut in and cut out. And if you're a perfectionist, this will definitely not work for you, but I am not. So I'm just going to kind of freehand this. There's just, I'm down in Las Vegas visiting some family and I love it. We've had so much fun and um, I'm getting really excited. I feel like I'm getting closer and closer to being done with the Christmas shopping and all that stuff. And then I can just enjoy family. So you can see this is a little bit weird here. So I'll probably fix this one when I'm tracing. But other than that, I don't hate it. I think it's pretty good. All right. So. Let's see, it's gonna have to be trimmed a little bit down if I'm gonna use this to back it. So I need to cut this one down here. And then same with this one. So I'll just cut it a little bit straighter. And then and cut this one in as well. All right, perfect. Okay. Right. So there we go. This is kind of my little tree shape. I feel like I want um, to do this area a little bit different. So when I trace it, I'll work on that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace this. This is like my pretend Kiwi Lane template because I don't have winter. I'm just gonna trace it right here onto the Authentique paper. This is from Authentique, it's called Colorful Christmas. I really love it. So the first thing I wanna do is make sure it's the right size. So I'm gonna just trace this piece here on and just make some marks and then cut it with my paper trimmer. And then I will trace my tree. Okay. So now you can see this piece will go <clears throat> into this first inner layer, just like this. Okay, and it's a little bit big, so I'm just gonna trim that down. So I wanted to check first. Okay, 
trim it down just a smidge. Okay, so now this goes right in here, like so. And there you go. Okay, and that will be held in by this layer. This will keep it really nice and tight. But if you didn't have this layer, you could just um, use like a hard piece of cardboard as well. And then you could also make it a bigger hole, but this is gonna work perfectly for me. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my tree, I'm gonna center it on my paper, and I'm gonna trace with a pencil so I know that it's the way I want it before I cut it. All right, so pencil time. All right. So I think I'm gonna make my trunk a little bit shorter. I like this part. I'm gonna go like this. And then this one I think is okay. But then this is where it gets a little bit weird and wacky. So I think I'm gonna skip over that center one that I don't love so I can just retrace it better. And then I'll do this. And if like I said, if you're more a perfectionist, like I, I would maybe go back in and I'd get like my ruler or even use the back of a template and make these a little bit straighter, but I am not a perfectionist in any way. And so I'm just gonna try to add another point right here because the one I drew, like you can see when I cut it, it's cut it at a weird angle. So I'm just gonna go in and use the corner of this template to try to get the shape a little bit better. And then I'll do the same on this side. Kind of just make it match up as best as I can. You guys might not be able to see this, but like I'm matching on this side, the bottom, so it'll be like straight across. And that's not too bad, not too bad at all. I think it'll be the perfect little funky Christmas tree. So here is like the secret of cutting shapes like this out of the inside of your paper. Personally, I am not a fan at all of trying to um, like use an X-Acto knife or trying to um, uh, like poke it with your scissors and cut the center out. So what I like to do is whenever I'm designing, whether I'm doing like rings or any kind of a shape that's gonna be cut out of the center of a piece of paper, I always just decide that like right here, I'm gonna put some extra embellishments. And that way I can just cut through here and I'll tape it with a piece of tape when I'm done. And that way the cut will be covered by my embellishments. So I'm just looking to make sure that's kind of what I think. I think I'll put like a little sentiment and some stuff right here and I think that'll be perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut in right here. So then it's really easy and I just have that one cut line that I will cover up later, but I don't have, it's a lot easier to cut your shape out. So once I have this cut out, I'll have my first layer basically done. I will be adding some embellishments, but you guys will kind of, I think, um, once we get this step done, you'll better understand what it is that we're doing. All right. You might try to distress it. I think that'll make the edge a little bit more defined. So I'll do that as well. Um, but I think this is going to be so cute and I can't wait to see. I'm going to try to do this again with some other shapes for some other seasons. I like to create a um, frame for each month of the year. And sometimes it will have, you know, sometimes I get carried away and I even do a couple designs and I change it in the middle of the month just because there's so much fun to make. And then I have like a really cool, like kind of plastic tote and I store all of my decorated um, boards, all of these inserts that have been decorated. I just store them in the bin and like the Ziploc bags. And then I label them with the month and I just pull it out for each month. 
So when it's the new month, I put it on um, a shelf in my house. We just moved, so I'll have to find a new place for it. Hopefully, maybe like on our fireplace mantle or something like that. I really love decorating for all the seasons. That's why I was so excited when Kiwi Lane we came up with the snap frame. It's just so much fun. Okay. All right. <clears throat> And done. Okay, so we have our cutout. So all I'll use is just a little piece of regular scotch tape. Now I'm like, where's my scotch tape? And I'll um, put this tape together. And then later when I go to decorate, it'll disappear when I put some embellishment over the top of it. Um, I've been decorating pretty much so I don't have any paper right now. Okay, well, that's okay. I will just um, do that later. So anyway, so that's that part. And so then you'll see here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this back piece, which we'll be decorating with the ribbon and everything like that. So it'll go like this. This piece first, then the backing, so it keeps it stiff. And then this piece. Okay, so you can see, oh, I forgot to put my phone in. Hold on. Sorry, that's so loud. All right, there we go. Okay. So you see how it creates this really cute shadow with this different shape. So fun. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to decorate this background with the ribbon and these and that's going to create like a really fun thing and you don't have to um you just will glue it straight and then it will fill up the space so that's what we're going to do so i'm going to take my paper you can use any paper uh, for me i'm going to cover the whole thing so i'm just going to use this so it's kind of has a green background because some of my um some of my paper or my ribbons are kind of see through. So I want to use something the color of a tree behind it. So again, I'm just going to measure the size that I need for my paper. And then I'm going to start decorating with the ribbon. All right. So I thought this would be really fun too with like, um, really anything you could do like a pumpkin or um, a little ornament and you're just using, like if you did like a pumpkin, you could use just different orange ribbons but with different textures. And that'd be really fun. Okay, so this is one of the ribbons that I got, which is gonna be basically the base of my tree. It has this really fun texture. Um, so when you, have it coming through, it will look kind of fringy because I want it to have that texture for my tree. And then I have um, this one, this is like kind of like a rope, which I thought I would kind of layer and that would be more like a string light. And then I'll add the pom-poms again, just to kind of have different layers of texture. And I have this one, I don't know if we'll end up using it, but I just thought it was cute too. So the other idea that I had was to take my card borders and to get out my, um, my scallops from Delight and to cut one with paper and then layer that with the ribbon. But for tonight, oh, look, here's my tape guys, hello. Um, for tonight, we're just going to use the ribbons and then maybe for my next one, I'll like mix the paper and ribbons together. Okay, so you can see like I'm not even really doing anything with it, but you can see how you'll see this through and that will kind of create the texture or the design of your cutaway. Okay, so let me tape this and then we'll start gluing stuff. So you could use some uh, hot glue. I'm just going to use my regular adhesive just because that's what I have with me. 
but just keep in mind, you can definitely change it up and use some different um, kinds of materials. Or you might want to use hot glue because like with ribbon and stuff, it will make it stay a little bit better. Okay, I'm just going to tape this really quick. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> Got to make sure to line up my stripes or it'll look weird. Uh, okay, perfect. Okay, great. Um, all right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the green at the for this um, tree and kind of layer it. And then I'm going to add more different things to it. So I know I need to kind of get an idea of where to start so I'm not wasting my ribbon. So I'm just going to lay this just like how it will be once it's all put together. And then I'm just going to make a small mark where the top of my tree is just so I know kind of where to start the same with the bottom of where I want to stop with the green. And again, you don't have to make a shape of the tree on the back. We're literally just going to just do straight lines. But when you look at it through the, the thing, it will only show that shape, right? Okay, so I like this a lot. Um, I thought it was just really fun. And so I think what I'll do is start gluing it down and then I'm gonna kind of layer it so I'll do like one like this and then the other one like this so it kind of covers more and I had the idea of just um using regular tape again because this isn't going to show and it's going to be a little bit easier so I'll start just kind of like this on this very top tip be tippy top part and then if you wanted to like I could put a star on the front, like right here, I'll put a star so it'll kind of like layer over. I think it's gonna turn out cute. So, um, let's see. It's so hard for me to not see your guys' comments. I'm so bummed. <laughs> like uh, this hotel we're staying at, it has to have a special login for the um, internet and I text my husband to find out and he didn't answer because he's in meetings at work. So sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. So then I'm just gonna keep going down. So this is gonna be my base and I'm gonna do this for the whole thing. And then I'm gonna layer more ribbons and these other little balls and things like that on top of it. So this is like my base tree. And so I'm gonna keep going with just this one. And I want to make sure that I'm going further out because the shape of the tree kind of goes further out. So you can see how I'm alternating it so that when it lays together, it kind of fills in more of the space. But I'm not too worried about it filling in too much of the space because I do think it's kind of fun to see the paper behind it. Plus I'm gonna be adding a ton of other stuff. Like I have um, two more ribbons, plus I have all these pom-poms, which I wanna add kind of as like ornaments and things like that. But um, I, everything I have is in boxes right now, but I was thinking, you know, I have tons of ribbon and um, lace and felt. And I thought this would be really fun to just kind of use different items that you have at home to create this textured background. So let's see if you guys can kind of get a vision for what we're going for. Um, let me hold this up. And so we can see how it's looking so far. Sorry. I hate how loud the wood is. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's so loud. All right. See? how you can see this. And I am gonna distress this to give it kind of a sharper edge. I just love that like shadow box kind of cute texture. I think it's so fun. So let's finish that out. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm making such a mess. All right, so I'm just kind of adding my little bit. The only thing I'm thinking about now is I don't really have anything brown, but maybe I have some brown paper and I can like, fold it 
to make it corrugated looking to do the stump, you know what I mean? I just love all the different textures and things like that. It looks so fun. Um, and just something different for your frame. All right. So this is our bottom. I just want to make sure I'm going to have enough, which it looks like I'll be okay. Um, so. Then I kind of know what I'm working with as far as like thickness or whatever. So this is the bottom part. And I love it. I think it's so fun. Uh, did I say that enough times, guys? Anyway, so we've been doing um, this really fun activity. It's actually from our church it's called Light the World. And so, like, every day it gives you either like there's a calendar you can print off, but um, you get a text message. And so it's really fun because it's just like helping me to remember to do service this Christmas season, which is really important to me and to think about our family and the true moon Christmas. And so today was really cool because it was um, grandparents day, like focus on our grandparents. So um, I was thinking about my grandma. She actually passed away this summer and she was great. She was so but we always make cookies together and she was really good at making gingerbread houses. She would always make gingerbread houses with us. So it was really special because our, um, when she passed away, um, our aunt, she was able to find her gingerbread recipe in her own handwriting. And so she like texted it to all of us. So I'm excited to make a, um, a uh, scrap page with including that with her own handwriting. And just before I left for this trip, I was at my sister's house and she was making gingerbread ornaments. And she was doing like where you melt the Jolly Ranchers and that creates kind of a um, stained glass window effect kind of a thing. And it just really was fun. Just even like walking into her house and smelling the gingerbread recipe just really reminded me of my grandma. So grateful for my family. And um, it was really good. So I was just trying to, it said, you know, to write a letter. But it's like kind of crazy. I'm getting to the point where most of my, all of my grandparents, my husband's grandmother is still alive, but all of my grandparents are, have actually passed away. And so I was like, I guess today I was just wanting to try to, uh, remember them and share about that on social media. So thanks for helping me guys. I'm listening to my story about my grandma. She was wonderful. She used to always perm our hair when we were little. So like the smell of perms and gingerbread. Those are the things that remind me of her the most. Um, but she was always such a good example of like service and Christ-like love. She was always serving others. She was really amazing lady. Anyway, um, but yeah, thanks for letting me share that story with you to help me to fulfill the light the world challenge for today. Um, because I haven't had a chance to go on and post anything yet. So this is on social media, so that counts, right? Anyway, um, what kind of, tell me in the comments what kind of fun little traditions that you guys do for the holidays. This year is a little bit different because we usually do a lot more, go a lot more places and we always go and see my husband's family. We are not getting together this year because just traveling, especially having to fly in and things like that. It's a little bit more dangerous. So we're trying to reduce any kind of, you know, things that we can. So it definitely looks different this year, but we are, have been trying to still keep the holiday spirit and um, do fun things. So I was kind of thinking this one would almost be like the lights. So it would be more kind of like not straight. I would do it more at an angle. So for this one, I'll probably use the regular tape and just make the strings a little bit longer so that I can Kind of have it out of sight. Let's see. Let me grab my tree. It fell to the ground loudly. You guys are probably like, this is the noisiest 
thing I've ever heard. Okay, that's good. So anyway, I'm really actually loving how this is turning out. I think the colors are super fun and bright, which is my favorite. And this is actually the only Christmas tree I've decorated this year because we uh, are in temporary housing. My husband got relocated for work, so we haven't found a house yet. Um, but we have just like this little apartment that they are putting us up in. And it's just funny because my husband bought this tiny tree from the grocery store that's already pre-lit and we put some candy canes on it, but it's not really how we usually decorate. So it's a little more low key this year. So here I am decorating the tree with you guys. All right, let's see. And then we're gonna add a few of the poof balls and then we'll be done. It's like super fast because you don't have to trace and ink and cut everything. You're just really using the ribbon to kind of do the work of all the different paper pattern, pattern paper and things like that, right? I feel like this one's really tight and then this one needs to go up a little bit more just to be a little bit more symmetrical here. All right, let's see that maybe more. All right, and then we'll do another one. I feel like I should be singing Christmas songs to you. I think my favorite Christmas song is probably White Christmas. I love that song. Um, and then for like a church song, it's got to be Silent Night. What's your guys' favorite? Tell me in the comments. I won't be able to see it for a little bit, but I would love to hear what you guys love. All right. And then just a couple more of these, and then we'll add our little ornament balls. And then we'll decorate the front a little bit more, add a little sentiment, and maybe cut out a couple of templates. I have this really cute striped paper, so I thought maybe I'd do a little candy cane, which is from Tiny Traditions, one of my faves. Okay, let's check out how our tree turned out. If only it took this long to decorate a tree at home, that's like a full day project. And I always feel like we always have like one light bulb that we can't find that's out, trying to ruin everything. All right, let's see how it's looking so far. Okay, let's check it out. Oh my gosh, I love it. Do you guys think this is cute or am I just crazy? I really think it's darling. Oh, Christmas tree. I love all the texture. Okay, I'm gonna add some little poof balls. So this would be really good to have also some, you know, what was I calling it earlier? Oh, a hot glue then would probably be helpful with these little things. But we'll just try to make it work. So what are you guys thinking? Maybe some red ones, like little ornaments? I don't know, should I try to put regular adhesive on it? Gotta work with what you got. Okay. Um, yes, so I'll put this here to hold it while I when I press down. I don't want the thing to move. Okay, and then we need some green ones and some white ones. This is going to be a cute tree. And then just keep on making it cute. Maybe a little bit of bigger ones. And some smaller ones. <laughs> I love all the textures. I just think it really like adds a fun layer to everything. Um, more red. You one right there. All right, let's see, how's that looking? Here's a little red one that will be good down here. I need to do something for my trunk for sure. 
because there's something. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Dashing down the sun. Just kidding. <laughs> but seriously, this is really getting me in the holiday spirit right now, for sure. All right. All right. Maybe one right here. I don't know. I should probably use some of these ones too, but I love the little glittery ones. Mm. I don't know, what do we think? Does that look good? Maybe one more? Let me look and see where it looks like it's lacking. Maybe one right here. Let me see. I have to look at it in the camera to make sure. I'm gonna put a star here that I gotta cut out. Um, I'm gonna put like right here a little saying. I don't know, I kind of, I think that's good. I'll move this guy up here. Since we have this white one down here. I don't know. What are you guys thinking? This is why I need I need some moral support. Little little bit of red. Maybe I'll mix in some of the flat reds. Let's see. I think I would definitely recommend either the hot glue or even like a, you know, the kind that's like um, the liquid glue probably work a little bit better for this sort of thing. Okay, and one more green one. like that's cute I think it's pretty pretty cute look at all the texture and the fun colors okay so I'm going to look for some brown so I can kind of accordion fold it and give us a little stump let me see what I have brown 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 and I need my um definitely need my I need my um, distressing ink because I definitely need to distress that tree line so that we could see that. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut probably like an inch strip. And then I'm going to, Okay, so I just have this inch strip. It obviously doesn't have to be that long, but when you do a court, you do want it to be long because when you accordion fold it, it's obviously going to shrink it up. Super simple. I'm just going to fold it and then just keep folding it back and forth across just like this. And then we'll glue it behind just like everything else. So fun. This is so fun. Can't wait to see if you guys try it and what your cutout shapes will look like. And also I can't wait to see what I'm gonna do for next month. Now I'm like, what other cutouts can I do? Cause the cutout is just so different and fun. And you're not limited just to the cutout frames. You can also just use different shapes. Okay, so I have my little accordion. So I'm gonna pop this off and I'm going to put my accordion down here and I'm just gonna flatten out the ends so I have something to glue. So I'll just add a little bit of adhesive on both sides. And just depending on, you know, how much texture you can do it closer together out. But I'll just do mine just like this, like this. And then I'm probably just going to put a little bit of adhesive just so it doesn't stand up like that, like pop up. I'll just want it to kind of stick down a little bit. And then that's it. And then 
when I put my frame back on, look what a mess that is. And all you do is pop the frame down. It brings it back to life. What do we think? Pretty cute, right? I love the little tree stump. Okay, so now I want to decorate this part on the outside. So like I was thinking about it and I was like, you could add a star to the front. You could add a couple little presents. I'm just going to put like a little sentiment and maybe like a candy cane. I'm going to look at what, how the tiny traditions shapes look. So here's my smallest star we have. So I'm going to have to trace this and then cut it even smaller. Um, if you did a big snowflake in the middle, you could do like the little ones on top because you want to create kind of like multiple dimensions. So you have like, you can use pop-ups and then you have one layer, then you have another layer. And that really, I think is what it makes it really fun is the multiple layers. So I have this tiny star. I need something in between those two. Hopefully maybe one day, one day. So I'm going to use this star though tonight. And I'm going to add a couple little other things. So let's see what I have. So I have some different little cute Merry Christmas. Again, this has some dimension to it. So I want to add some of these. I also was thinking like you could do like this and you could do behind it like a red sleigh with like red ribbon. So you get the different textures, but then you could put the ski on top. So you have just different dimensions and then you could still do the reindeer. Like I was thinking it would be kind of cute to just do one element with like the, the pop down with the layer. And I'm still looking for my, oh yeah. I have a bunch of this Ephema also. So I thought I might grab one of these like Mary and put like the little thing here. So let's look and see what we have. There's some presents in here. We could put those under the tree. Let's see. All right, believe in the magic. I could put something like this with like some cute little, um, look if I wanted to, I could add a couple presents. I could even put some ornaments on the outside of my tree. That could be really fun. I think I wanna do this little saying. I'm gonna use this. And then I think I wanna do some, Maybe the thing is the colors in here is a little bit more subdued. That's what I just think I'll do with like the black and white. Whoa. Look at all this stuff. Let me look at the paper stickers I have. Because that could be a good idea too. So these are all the stickers which came with this, so it's gonna match really well. Um see I still like this, and I think I'm gonna back it with some paper. And then I want to cut, oh, this is so cute, oh, what fun. Um, I want to cut out a little candy cane or something, or maybe what we'll do is some presents and we'll make some little present bows. Hmm. Guys, I can't do it. I don't know what you're saying. It's so hard. You could use these letters. This came from the kit that came, so you could put another like dimension. Well, let's start with the star. Um, I see I have this red and white paper. That's why I was thinking of doing a candy cane because then it would be, you know, striped like a candy cane. But I have these little cute things too. So maybe I'll do this candy cane so it's more proportional. And then we'll just back this with some cute paper and keep it a little more simple because this is super busy. So let's start with a star. What do I want to do? I'm going to do this and then I think I'll use the, um, I think I'm gonna pack, put this behind here. Cause actually those are a bunch of little trees. That's kind of fun. Then I'll kind of fussy cut around it and I'll use some embellishments and then I'll add a few little elements and then we'll be done. Okay, so let's start with our start. I don't have, let me see if I have some yellow. Yellow, yellow paper. I think I have some. star. Corn. 
orange. All right, I'm just gonna use this. And so when I have a template and I want to create it a little bit smaller, let me move this over so I can show you what I do. So first I'll just trace it normally. And then you can, if you want, you know, trace again inside of that trace line. Um, but I just usually just cut it just like a little quarter inch inside. So always when I'm cutting my templates, I'm gonna cut around them just because then it makes it so much easier to use. And then I just cut in. And then um, to make sure I get the size I want, I'm just gonna start cutting in within that line. So you can see I have kind of a gap from there. Then I'm just gonna follow a similar pattern in the next one. And then I'm gonna go ahead, or if you've already cut it, you can again do the same thing, but you're just cutting against the edge instead of against the pencil line. And I kind of like my stars to be a little bit funky, like not perfectly even. So this one, almost like the one from Enchanted that's one of my favorite stars we have. So then on here, I might kind of just cut a few of the points a little bit different. There we go, that's done. So now I'm gonna take my, um, in, oh, what is it? Distressing? I'm gonna take my distressing ink and I think it's gonna really make the whole thing come to life. All right. So first we'll go ahead and distress the star. Maybe I need to cut this one a little bit more this way. I feel like I'm ruining my star. Now it's getting too uneven. Uh-oh, can I save it or am I gonna have to cut a new one? Only time will tell. <gasps> okay, I think it's fine. Okay, I'm gonna leave it alone before it gets worse. All right. So once I add the Distress Ink, it just really will give it more dimension, help it stand out more. And then I'm gonna use a foam dot again, just to add that extra layer of popping out. And then I'll stick that on this top piece. Okay, put the star on top of the tree. Oh, see, I like it. I think it turned out cute. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna bring it down just a little smidge and maybe turn it a little. And then I still need to um, do my embossing or my um, inking. And so one thing I was thinking about is I think I'm gonna ink this guy. Number one, I'm gonna move this side down because when I could have the frame on, I felt like I could kind of see a little bit of this side more. And then I think I'm gonna ink just the edging just to give it even more definition that you can kind of see that corrugated edge a little bit more. And then I'm gonna take this piece. I'm just going to do the edging. So that way when it's on top, you can really see the lines, they're more defined. And I do think it would be really cute to add like a little ornament on the, each of the points on this front, kind of like this we did with the star. I think I'm just gonna, cause I put so much underneath, I think I'm gonna keep it a little simpler. Plus this paper is kind of busy. Like maybe if it was just like a plain color, maybe I would do that too. I'm just gonna just put my little um, words right over here and I think I'll be done. So not too bad, pretty quick, less than an hour. If you've ever created with me before, that's super fast for me. I'm usually like two and a half, half hours. So we're doing pretty good. 
Okay, so now I'm going to start layering my words and then we'll put it all together. So let me see. I have this little saying which says, believe in magic, which I think is darling. So the first thing I'm gonna do is ink this edge. So it will stand out more against the background paper. And then I'm just going to fussy cut it. So all I'll do is just put some adhesive and put it right here. And then I'm just gonna cut around it and kind of give it about, oh, like a quarter inch edge. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'll put the edge that one. And then we'll look and see kind of how it looks. So this is just like this. I kind of want to do a solid color. Um, just one more layer just to even give it more definition. And I think I want to do like the red or green. So I have this green, which could work. This is from our little gnome kit. This is like my most favorite paper. So cute. La 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 la. This green might be good. It's a little bit brighter. I'd like to do the red. Okay, so we have this red. So I'll probably use that one. Or uh, I don't want to use my background paper, so we'll use this one. And then this time I'm going to probably make this a little bit even bigger. So maybe I could use a shape, like a tag or something. I don't know if the tag will be too small. Um, thinking, thinking, thinking. Okay. So I think I am gonna just do it square just to Keep it simple, but I would also consider using like tiny shapes and do like a circle around it. Oh, I don't know if you guys can even see this. I'm sorry. Um, like do just a square is what my plan is, just to kind of have it pop more. Um, but I would also consider doing the the circle from tiny shapes. I only brought a few templates with me because I kind of had I knew what I was going to be doing. So I think I'm going to just do a two by two inch square. I always have to check and be like, wait, is this my favorite paper? <laughs> Before I cut into the other. The other side, my most favorite thing. All right. I'm bad at measuring apparently today because this is more, this is bigger than two inches. Let's see. So maybe I'll do three inches. I think maybe two and a half. Let me make sure before I cut this time. Yeah, that should be good. Okay. This red is really cute. I love the, um, the snow flurries poke dots. All right. And so again, just always have to get my distressing done. And then what I'll do is I will put a um, pop-up dot here. Do with them. I know I have them because I just used them. Um, okay. Oh. So this is what I mean. I could have done like the circle. This is actually the ornament from Tiny Holiday, but sometimes I'll use it as a circle too. 
and then done the same, but just like did a little round edge, like tiny, it was tiny shapes. Um, and let's see. I also thought it'd be kind of cute if you wanted something smaller to like use a punch and make like just some circles to hang from each of your things and then add just like a little square for the pop up or sorry for the tops of the ornaments. I'm like, where oh where did that go? That's such a bummer. Okay, well, okay. If I find my pop-ups, I'll change it later, but this is fine for now. Okay, so it's gonna say believe in magic in here, with a little cute sentiment. And then I'm gonna add this really cute little candy cane, which is also popped up. And I'm going to um, kind of layer that on this corner. All right, so kind of like this. Believe in magic. And then a little candy cane. I have to make sure before I put this in what how far this is under the edge because there's this tiny little lip you see. I'm gonna put it back in here first just so I know for sure. Um, has the it's not like tucked under the edge. See? Okay. So then I will put this right here because I want to just be aware of my frame. And then I'm gonna put my little candy cane right here. I think that's like perfect. This paper is super busy. So even though in my heart, I'm like, I have all this cute stuff though. What if I added this or that? I kind of think I'm gonna stop. Like maybe I would add something on this side, <sighs> but I kind of am making myself stop because this paper is really busy and I don't want it to be too busy. Yeah. All right, so let's put it all together. It's time for the final reveal. Here we go. Oh, I just found my phone dots while I was getting this stuff. That's funny. All right, here we go. So you put this foam in. This is what keeps the um, separation. And then you have your backing piece, which usually I just decorate right on the board. But in this case, I just decorated this paper to be layered sandwiched in between. This needs some help. Hold on. Okay, there. Much better. Okay, so then I'm going to sandwich this one in there. Just like that. So I'm going to put this one, snap it in. There you go. Done. Pastel. So cute, it looks so cute. Um, with like a little word sign over here. Very, very cute. Okay, I'm gonna change a couple things just because I am looking at it this way now. It's all together. I'm gonna put the foam dots on here. Okay. So I think I want this to be up a little bit higher. Like, right there, the foam dots on, and cute, popped up a little more. And I'm still gonna use the candy cane and just layer that right here. Okay. The only other thing I'm like not loving is like, I think this needs to just be a little bit straighter. So I'm just gonna try to sneak in and change this piece here. Just get it as straight as I can. There we go. Okay, let me reassemble. And I think we'll be good. All right. 
So this is my first layer, just tucks right in. You guys see that? And then this piece is just for stability. If I had used a firmer piece of paper here, I wouldn't need to put this one here, but it's a good use for it. And I am gonna decorate it for next month's frame anyway, so it'll get more than one use. And then I just am gonna slide in my ribbon paper, just like this. And then this is back one. And then I will tell you guys, sometimes if I'm using a thicker cardstock here, because the magnets are right in these corners, um, so you can see them right here. Okay. See the magnets are just right here in these corners. Um, so sometimes I'll actually just trim away the paper a little bit right here in the corner. That way the magnet and the metal can meet together. But because I don't mess with it, it sits on a shelf, it doesn't really have a big impact for me personally. And it's usually able to hold through. But if you're wanting a more secure hold, then I would recommend cutting that. So the magnets are really strong. It will hold really well if it doesn't have anything in between. Okay, ready for the final reveal? Here it is. So, so cute. Mm -hmm. All right, I believe, oh, I think this goes down here. It came off. Okay, believe in the magic. Pretty magic, if you ask me. I think it turned out really cute. Love the texture, especially in person. You can see that cut away a lot more. I'm obsessed. Can't wait to see. I hope this inspired you guys to use your snap frames in a different way. And hopefully I'll be seeing some cute cutaway ideas from you guys. All right. Have a wonderful night. Thanks. Bye.